Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so I want to now describe to you an experimental technique that you can use to investigate which uh, amino acids face into the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So we know that the M2 ion, uh, sorry, not the M2 ion channels, that's something in influenza. Uh, we know that the M2 membrane spanning alpha helices, uh, they uh, line the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Um, but not all of the amino acids on those M2 alpha helices will actually face into the pore. So let me draw this picture again. Okay, so if this is our M2 uh, membrane spanning alpha helix, then it goes like so. It has these seven turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then that's it complete. So this is the M2 membrane spanning alpha helix. Okay, now these amino acids that are right over here will face the actual pore. Okay, so let me draw another picture of this. So you'll have these five M2 alpha helices positioned like this, making up the lining of the pore. But only the amino acids on these faces of the alpha helices here that actually will actually face into the pore, basically. And these ones at the back, they won't face into the pore. Okay, so we can uh, use a technique known as substituted cysteine accessibility method uh, in order to work out which of the amino acids in this polypeptide actually face into the pore. Okay, so that's what I'm going to describe to you today. Uh, well, now, substituted, uh, substituted uh, cysteine accessibility method. Okay, so basically this makes use of the fact that the cysteine amino acid is the only amino acid to have a file group on it accessibility method. Okay, so I'll show you the structure of cysteine and then I'll describe the method to you because it's going to totally, totally revolve about around cysteine. Okay, right. So, cysteine then. What is the structure of cysteine? And again, I'll draw it as though it is within a polypeptide. So here's the amino group of cysteine. Here's the alpha carbon of cysteine. Here's the hydrogen coming off the alpha carbon. Here's the methylene group of the R group. And then off the methylene group, you then have this thiol group here. Okay? And then down here is this carboxylic acid group, which is in an amide or peptide link with the next amino acid along. Okay. So, um, basically, this thiol group here will react with a number of compounds. It will react in ways that none of the other 20, sorry, 19, the other 19 amino acids, there are 20 amino acids that are used in proteins. This cysteine amino acid will react in a way that no other uh, amino acids uh, will react. So, what we can do is we can gradually go through this polypeptide and mutate each amino acid in turn to a cysteine. So we can make loads of different mutant uh, acetyl, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor protein subunit uh, mut mutants, which all have a cysteine put in in place of a different amino acid. So we'll gradually work our way through, and in each mutant we'll just mutate one amino acid, but we'll, uh, we'll, it will be one of these amino acids in this M2 alpha helix. So we'll gradually work through and do this for every single amino acid in this M2 alpha helix. Okay. Then what we can do is in each of these mutants we can bind things to that cysteine amino acid and uh, basically, well what we can do is we can expose the mutant to something that will bind to the cysteine amino acid if the cysteine amino acid is exposed on, uh, well, if it's exposed, full stop. So, basically, let me describe it to you again because it's worth repeating. What you can do is you can go through each and every one of these amino acids in this M2 alpha helix. You can mutate each amino acid in turn to a cysteine. Now, if that cysteine 
is exposed, i.e. if it aligns the pore, then when you expose that mutant to a certain drug molecule, which I'll introduce in a moment, that drug molecule will bind. You can use the binding of that drug molecule to indicate uh, that uh, that cysteine has been put in somewhere which is exposed um, exposed basically and therefore lines the pore so you can go through each one of these and if you don't get any binding that indicates that it must be at the back and buried deep within the structure of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor whereas if it does get the drug binding then that indicates that it is uh, exposed and therefore is lining the pore so this is a mechanism by which we can decide which amino acid residues are actually lining the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and which are not so, what is this drug that we are going to bind to our cysteine amino acid residues? Well, it's a drug known as MTSA, okay, and this stands for methane thiosulfonate ethyl ammonium, okay, so methane is the N, okay, the TS is then thiosulfonate, and don't worry, I'll, I'll talk you through this name, sulfonate, Okay, and then ethyl ammonium, ethyl ammonium. Right, so let me firstly tell you what sulfonate is, because sulfonate is one of these groups in chemistry that people generally haven't actually studied unless you've done a degree in chemistry. So, let me tell you what the sulfonate group is. So, sulfonate. And by the way, th this is the American spelling, which is gradually taking over, but the old English spelling is to put PH there. So, this is the uh, American English spelling, this is the British English spelling, sulfonate. They're the same thing, though. Okay, so a sulfonate group, then, has a sulfur atom in it, and it has these two double bonds to oxygen, then it has an alcohol group here, and then it will have an R group there. So, this R group can be whatever you like, basically. So, if you've, say, got a benzene ring attached there, then you'll say that the benzene ring has a sulfonate group. So, this bit is the sulfonate group. Okay, now let me explain what a thiosulfonate group is. Thiosulfonate. Okay. So a thiosulfonate is very similar to a sulfonate. So you have this sulfur here with these two oxygens linked by double bonds. And then you'll have another sulfur linked to it. And then you'll have another R group, which could be different. So basically, you have this thiol group here. You have this other sulfur linked here. So this is a thiosulfonate group. So this molecule is going to have a thiosulfonate group in it, basically. Okay, and it tells us exactly what these two groups, this R and R prime group, should be. It tells us it's methane, thiosulfonate, ethyl ammonium. So it tells us the two groups, basically. Right, so let's look at these um, then. Okay, right. So we need methane, a methyl group, sticking off here. So let's put that in. That's this methane here. So H3C. And then we'll have the sulfur double bonded to the oxygen twice. Okay. Then a sulfur here. And then what's this next group? It's ethyl ammonium. So stick on your ethyl group. Okay. So that's a two carbon hydrocarbon. And then you need an ammonium group on the end, which is a nitrogen with four bonds, like so. Okay. And that will have a positive charge. So that now is the structure of methane thiosulfonate ethyl ammonium, or for short, MTSEA. Okay, methyl thiosulfonate ethyl ammonium. Okay, now this drug molecule will bind to uh, cysteine amino acids in uh, proteins. And let me show you how it will bind to uh, the uh, cysteine residue in proteins. Okay, so what's going to happen, basically, is that if we, where's my cysteine? Oh, my cysteine's there. I'll draw another cysteine out here. So if we have this cysteine amino acid within our polypeptide here, okay, like so, here's the alpha carbon, and here's the R group of the cysteine amino acid, okay, with its thiol group here, 
and the carboxylic acid group down here, then uh, what's going to happen is you're going to cleave this bond here, and you're also going to cleave this bond here, okay? So you're going to break the bond between the sulfur and the hydrogen and break this bond between the sulfur and this other sulfur. Then you're going to link this sulfur onto this sulfur here, okay, like so. And you'll link that hydrogen that we've broken off the thiol group of the cysteine amino acid to this sulfur atom here of this broken off group from this MTSE, uh, MTSEA molecule. Okay, so that's the way that you can modify the cysteine amino acids um, by uh, mixing it with MTSEA. And MTSEA will only interact with cysteine amino acids. So what you can do is you can gradually go through and mutate these amino acids that align the pore uh, to cysteines. Then you can try and get this drug to bind to them. And if it does bind to them, then you know that that uh, amino acid must have been exposed. So you can work out gradually which positions on this um, alpha helix uh, are actually lining the pore. And that's the uh, method of substituted cysteine accessibility. Okay, thanks.